Hi everybody. I wanted to put together a little demonstration of my Bouncy Bone script to show you how it works. You can download it from the link in the description at scriptspot.com. Bouncy Bones is a toolkit I made which will help you to create dynamic bones for secondary motion a bit faster in 3ds Max. I just want to make it clear that I'm not an expert with Max script or programming, and this is one of the more complex scripts I've put together in my free time, so don't be surprised if you run into a few bugs. In fact, I would recommend that with each scene, you save a copy after setting up your bones or objects before applying Bouncy Bones. I notice with a lot of scripts I've downloaded, the code is often hard to understand. I've tried to make the code a bit easier to understand in my script by adding in some comments to help explain what is going on. So definitely make sure you check out the code if you're interested in learning Max script a little bit yourself. Okay, so now I'll go over a typical way to install and use the script. You can integrate it into your menu or use your interface as well, but it's just as easy to launch through the Max script menu. The first thing you want to do is open up your Bouncy Bones folder. And then you want to open up another folder and navigate to your 3ds Max installation where you have your scripts folder. Select bouncybones.ms and bouncybones.bmp and drag them into your 3ds Max scripts folder. I've already done that so I'm not going to do it again. The next thing you want to do is navigate to your My Documents 3ds Max Scenes folder. Select the Bouncy Bones Tool folder and drag that into your Scenes folder. You have to make sure that you do this step because this spring dummy.max file is required for Bouncy Bones to work properly. Okay, so you should have it installed if you've done those steps. All you really need to do now is launch Bouncy Bones script, and you can do that in two ways easily at this point. First way is you can just drag the script directly into your Max window, and that will launch the Bouncy Bones tool immediately. Or you can go to the Max script menu, open script, and select the Bouncy Bones.ms file wherever you have your script folder located. When you do this, it's going to open up the script editor where you can see the comments of the code that are located here. They're the color green. Um, each comment has this little two little dashes in front of it. And that's how you create a comment, just in case you didn't know. So here is a new comment. Okay. And I'll just put two little dashes and it turns to green. So this does not affect the code in any way. It's just for us to understand how it works. If you want to launch the code from here to see how it works, you just go to the Tools menu, Evaluate All, or hit the keyboard com combination Control E. So, let's launch it. The first thing that happens when you launch Bouncy Bones is you'll get an error message if you haven't used it before. That'll say, No Bouncy Bones in the scene. Welcome to Bouncy Bones. Select two bones, Root Bone first, then Dynamic Bone second. Click Make Bouncy Bones button after setting parameters. OK. So now the window will pop open. So we have some initial settings for our springs that we can adjust here. And we have some initial settings for our helper objects that will be created that we can adjust here, such as whether or not they'll be visible, the size of the object, and the offset that they will have from the root bone when they're created. Um, you don't need to really mess with any of this stuff. All you really need to do is just select your first bone, hold down control and select your second bone. This will be the root bone and then this will be the bouncy bone. We'll hit make bouncy bone. If you want to make more than one bouncy bone in a chain or interconnected, like for example we have this tree and we want all of the limbs to be moving around, um, you just keep going along and selecting your root bone and then your bouncy bone and click Make Bouncy Bone. Root Bone, Bouncy Bone, Make Bouncy Bone. And go on like that. And your whole system will be ready to go at that point. So now that we've done all this, you might be wondering what's going on with all these green boxes and uh, how has this changed our bone setup? For the root bone, nothing has really changed. Uh, its controllers are all left alone. 
the only thing that's happened is that we've created a link constraint just by as if you were to go to select and link you create a link constraint um, locking the dummy object here to this root bone. The dummy object has a position spring controller automatically applied to it and this is what gives the whole system its dynamic motion. The bouncy bone all that, all that happens here is it uh, has a look at constraint applied to it and it's being told to orient in the direction of this dynamic spring uh, dummy object here. So if we want to rotate or change the, ro the uh, orient orientation of this uh, bone here, we're going to move the dummy object around in the scene just like we want to adjust that rotation because we can no longer rotate the bone directly because of the rotation look at constraint. So um, if you want to adjust later on after you've applied bouncy bones and adjust the way that your model looks or the bones and the orientation that are have this set up, all you have to do again is just to move the dummy objects around. Um, you can adjust the dummy objects up and down along their axis uh, and get them you know towards the end of, the, of each limb that would be the end of each bouncy bone. If you want to, you can also uh, adjust the offset before you create these helper objects and that just will adjust how far away it's putting these uh, helper objects. So the offset, if I put a high offset it would put it up here, if I put a low offset it would put it really close down to the base of our root bone. An offset of zero would put it right at the base of the root bone. Um, you can also adjust the size as you want. Um, if you need to scale these, that's fine. You can scale them as you want, um, either after the fact or in advance by adjusting the scale parameter here. So now you can adjust the spring settings individually for each of these dummy objects. If you want to have one dummy object or one of these spring controllers bouncing around a lot more, you could o open up its individual spring properties here if you go into the uh, controller menu you can open up its individual spring properties and adjust them as needed adjust the forces as needed to uh, get the kind of effect you want for an individual spring um, but if you want to affect all the springs in the whole system you can just open up the post build controls drop down now and there's a whole bunch of options in here for affecting it once you've created it First of all, um, you can uh, show the bones in the system or hide the bones in the system by clicking the show or hide bones button. So any bone that's been applied will have its have had its name changed so that its name now reads as bouncy bones underscore or whatever the number of that bone is. You can also show and hide your helper objects. So if you want to hide those uh, green spring helper dummies uh, after the fact you can just hit the hide button or hit the show helper button and they'll come back and you can see them again. When you create bouncy bones there's an automatic uh, wind uh, force created with each bone and they're invisible by default so if you hit the show wind button you'll be able to see the different wind controllers that were created. In this case some of these controllers are laying on top of each other so the wind controller that affects this dummy and this dummy are actually both just sitting right here on top of each other. Um, you don't really need to adjust the wind controllers individually unless you need to, um, in which case it's kind of tricky because then you would have to go in here and uh, move them around a little bit in the scene. It doesn't really matter where the wind controllers are positioned though, so if you move them from their original position, that's fine. It just by default will put them at the base of the uh, root bone that you're applying the uh, bouncy bones to. So in this case, you can adjust the individual wind uh, parameters, but you can also just adjust the uh, global wind control here um, in your post-build controls. 
you can just change this uh, parameter here and you'll adjust all, all of your wind controllers at once. So if I hit the play button, you may not be able to see it, but the wind is, is very, very slightly moving these bones around about maybe one pixel or two pixels. See it kind of jerking here at the top a little bit. Um, if you increase the wind turbulence, you can already get, uh, I'm just going to hide the wind too. You can already see how it's uh, creating some kind of a wind kind of effect on the bones. Now, the wind effect really is more just like a noise effect on the uh, dummies. It's not a dynamic effect, but it is being blended with a dynamic effect. So, if we were to animate this object moving around, not only would these dummy springs be kind of wiggling around from the random wind noise that we have here, but it would also be affected by the spring's uh, dynamic controller. So if I just hit the auto key button, and let's say if we were going to make this tree into some kind of a character that was hopping around, we could make him jump up in the air and then land really quickly. Actually, I'll just hold on the shift key and drag to copy in the first key so he lands perfectly back at the ground. And if we hit play, we can see sort of a jiggling secondary motion on these, on these bones. So if you don't really want this extra wind turbulence and you're just going to use just the dynamic bone, um, you can turn off the wind turbulence just by zeroing out uh, the wind turbulence parameter here. And if you uh, have some keyframes though, your bones are still going to be affected by the dynamic motion. So I'll make a, another keyframe here. As you can see as I'm moving uh, the object, there's a, kind of a delayed effect already happening. I'm just going to copy this keyframe over and then copy over the first keyframe. Okay. So if you want to increase the dynamic effect of the spring controller, you can up the mass here, put it at 8,000 just to see how that works. It really gives, gives a lot of extra secondary motion. Um, you can also increase the drag or decrease the drag as, as necessary to really uh, get the kind of motion you're looking for. Um, if you hit uh, this button here, you can turn off the bouncy bone dynamics. Um, you're still saving all the settings there, it's just temporarily turned off. You can hit the activate button here to turn it all back on. Also, if you have a spring controller selected, you can hit um, to deactivate or activate the individual dynamics for that spring controller. So if I just wanted to turn off a couple of them, I could just select them and press that button and it'll only turn off those ones that I've selected. Again, I can reactivate all of them at once if I just hit the activate all dynamics button. So that's pretty much all you need to know to be able to set up your bouncy bones and apply and adjust the wind and everything for them. Um, there's a couple other buttons in here that are just basically to handle the way that the look at constraints are rotating your bones. Um, so if you, if you want to adjust the, the rotation of the look at constraint quickly, you can just click on these buttons with that one of the bouncy bones uh, selected. There's also a little button here that just opens up the bones editing mode. Um, if you want to adjust the scale of your bones. Um, and at the top, again, also you can change the way that uh, it's initially orienting the look at constraint. Um, you can have active uh, dynamics automatically turned off when you're creating your bouncy bones. And these uh, um, buttons here will also just quickly rotate the object's pivot around if you find that you know, it's not uh, orienting correctly when you're setting things up. One more thing I wanted to cover is how you would work with objects in this Bouncy Bones toolkit. So the first thing, I'll drop it back in here. And then we'll create a few objects to work with. Start with a box. And I'll create a cylinder. Turn on Auto Grid so that I can attach it to the top of it. There's a cylinder. And then I'll create a torus on top of that. Okay, now 
I want the torus to be oriented differently, so I'm going to turn on angle snap and rotate it 90 degrees like so and move it up. Now one thing that's kind of confusing with this is that um, we're in uh, the view coordinate system right now and so it always looks like the z-axis is pointed directly upwards in the world for each of these objects I'm selecting. But if we switch to the local coordinate system and we click on these objects, we'll notice that this torus has a different uh, axis rotation than the other two objects. These two still have their z-axis pointed up, and this one, now since we've rotated it, has its z-axis pointed this way. Uh, these buttons here at the top of the bouncy bones menu here, quick rotate object pivot, will allow you to quickly rotate the uh, axis automatically. Um, without having to go into the menu here and selecting it and then rotating it at 90 degrees this will just rotate along one of these axes 90 degrees every time you click the button. So we'll select this uh, torus and we'll just click the button here. See that just rotated around that way. And now just by clicking on the X rotation we've got it so that the z-axis is pointed up and the y-axis and the axis, x-axis are pointed in the same direction as our other objects. So now this should work fine. Uh, all we need to do is select the root object, select the object that's going to become dynamic, and then hit make bouncy bone, and then do the same thing again up here. And if we go into our post build controls, we can turn up the wind turbulence and hit the play button and see that we've already got some animation going on here. Um, one more thing to note, and I'm just noticing this now, is that the, uh, the pivot point here will probably need to be adjusted so that it's down where you have it connected for this object, for example. Um, if you want your rotation to be happening in the right place on that object. So uh, that's pretty much it in terms of working with objects. Um, yeah, all you gotta do now is just uh, start animating and making your little guys hop around. and you'll have some nice uh, secondary motion happening here like so well that should pretty much cover everything using the toolkit and if you have any questions or if you find it useful just send me an email on my website www.themindforest.com. Thanks for checking it out.